Portraits Artist of the Year, Eight Concepts for Judging. These are things that I talk about in my recaps, so let's get started. All right, most of these are friends of mine, some I don't know. David Chavino is the first one I have up, and I want to talk about lost and found edges, because this is something I talk about when I'm recapping the program. He is kind of a master of lost and found edges. You can see that where he creates forms and then kind of violates them. But the result is um, somewhere a line between abstract and what is real. And I thought I would share a recent portrait that he did. So because we are, you know, this comes up in Landscape Painter of the Year, but it also comes up in Portrait Artist of the Year. So you can see that here, where he's not as loose as he was in the uh, in the first painting that I showed, but he's definitely playing with lost and found edges. So that's one of the criteria I look at when I look at these uh, portraits. Next one up is David Loebenberg, who I do know, and I brought him up because he is uh, someone who is a master at pushing color. That's where you, you can identify a color and attach a value to it, and then rather than using conventional colors, as in matching, being a matchy-matchy painter in terms of matching it to what you see in front of you or what you see on the photograph, he pushes color. He identifies the color and then enhances it with brightness and with pure uh, hue. And he's extremely good at doing it. So you see in his portraits, that he uses really unexpected colors. He's always playing with warm colors against cool colors, which he does so beautifully here. In the face, it's all warm, and in the in the background, it's all dark. Oh, this is a watercolor, by the way, I should have said. And the first paintings that we looked at were uh, oils or acrylics, I'm not sure. Patty Mullica is also a friend of mine, and uh, let's take a look at her work. I, sing I singled her out as an, a good example of what a color value swap out is, which I referred to in my recaps a lot. This is when you, I instead of, again, matching a color to what you see, you match a color to the value of what you're trying to represent. So we all know there was no pink on the bridge. We know the actual thing that she saw or the photograph was would have been full of grays and muted tones. And what she does is she makes swap outs for those tones and values by using some pure color instead. And look at the value range from lightest lights to darkest darks. It's so effective that it creates that, that feeling of distance. Also a lot of warm and cool going on here. This is another one. This is uh, an illustration from one of her books. And you know that if we've all seen a boat like this in a marina, and it never looks like this in real life, it, it has very muted tones. And what she did was, yes, it's pushing color, but it's also making a color value swap out, specifically changing the color. So that you're, this is kind of what being a painter is, as opposed to representing exactly what you see in front of you. The next is finding a likeness. This is one of the criteria that I consider important in Portrait Artist of the Year. And I picked Taryn Day. And I should also say that all of these artists are living today and working, and they all do all of the things that I'm talking about in terms of concepts, but I just singled them out because these uh, I thought about their work. So. Here's a picture Karen did of um, somebody, and she has a likeness, but she also she also has a message in that uh, along with the likeness, which I sort of appreciate. But let's move forward. Um, she also does all the other concepts that I talked about. This is a painting that she did back when Barack was. Barack Obama was a pr the president. So this is this is sort of an older work of hers, but but I think it stands up. Look, there is there is definitely a likeness without a stiffness, and she's just so good at doing that. She is a tremendously talented uh, uh, illustrator of of all forms and 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 teacher as well. So the next one up is um, value relationships with Carol Marine. Now Carol Marine, all of these painters do everything right. Carol Marine is just I kind of look at her for her value relationships 
because if you squint your eyes, you are going to see some real contrast between her lights and her darks and the pattern of those lights and darks. She also is pushing color, but not to the same extent that we saw earlier. So your brain kind of registers it as, yeah, that, that looks quite normal to me, and yet the colors are very exaggerated. Here's the next one. <laughs> I can't help thinking that she was thinking about David Chavino when she painted this one. And I have a wiffle ball, and I thought, wow, it'd be fun to try that. But she's just so good at what she does that this, this was a good uh, example of all the things I just talked about, but in a simple form. You know, she's pushing color, she's playing with lost and found edges, she's dealing with neutrals against bright, brighter colors, she's got a blue hues behind playing against the opposite color of orange. This is one of my favorite paintings of hers, of a rose, where if you squint your eyes, you're going to see such interesting value relationships. And not only interesting value relationships, but she will also take her neutrals. If you look at some of the shadows under the petals, there's neutrals in there, but there's neutrals with quite a bit of color in them. And so the overall, what happens is that the where she puts pure hue becomes even brighter because she's playing against neutrals. Now the next painter who um, I adore and admire is Karen O'Neill. And I'm going to talk about brightness and dullness here. She does all the things that I've talked about before, but she's a good example of brightness. She achieves a brightness and spark and a crackle in her work that, that many people don't. Oh, I certainly don't, but wish I could. But the reason that she's able to do that is obviously she's a very good colorist and painter, and also because she plays with those neutrals. Look at how neutral everything is except for um, maybe it's a tomato, I don't know, the cherries, the lemon. If you keep your neutrals neutral, even though there's actually a lot of color in the neutrals, when you put your pure hue in, it will read as even more bright than it appears coming out of the tube. It's an optical illusion. Now the next one is composition, which is Susan Abbott, and also sort of pulling it all together. Not that the other painters don't, but I, I just think she's a good example of, of everything I'm talking about here. This is the painting that got away from me. This is one of my favorites of hers. Um, she's a watercolor painter, and she also paints in um, oil, I believe. So we can see here, look at, at in terms of composition. When I talk about mass for value, mix for color, what she's done here is she has, there's a lot of massing for value in the far distance. And then she's found color. Here's a great example of it. Look at the mass for value in that purple triad going on in the middle of the painting. That's massing for value. Then she mixes for color with that field behind. So this is just a great example of that. It also does everything else that you want a good painting to do in terms of lost and found edges and applying paint. All right, here's the next one for composition. When I talk about islands surrounded by oceans, this is what I'm talking about. This is a painting where people would say, oh, she's violating the rules. You can't put a telephone pole in the foreground. Well, you, you can, especially if you have a lot of horizontal or diagonal stuff going on behind. The other thing is she lets the, um, the subject off the canvas so that it isn't isolated by, by surrounding real estate. Here's another example. This is a watercolor. The last one we saw was an oil where, you know, my tendency would have been to put the whole side of the house in, but just the fact that she lets that chimney pipe run off is super important, as are some of... So she's always considering the, the edges as well as the thing that she's painting. And here is, I believe this is a watercolor. Yeah, this is on the road where she lives. She just really knows how to pull it all together, as do the other artists. So those are the criterion that I'm looking for when I'm looking at um, Portrait Artist of the Year or Landscape Artist of the Year. And I just wanted to give an explanation of what some of those concepts and terms are that I'm using. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, mix for color, and please join my YouTube channel if you would. And I leave you with this final painting of Susan's, which I don't believe is a watercolor, no. But she's, she is able to do triad work even with uh, oil-based or acrylic-based paint, which is pretty amazing. And right now in Vermont, where, where we both live, 
this is what the world looks like outside. Although if you look with your regular eyes, it's just going to look all brown. But she's able to find the color. So she's doing it all here in terms of uh, letting the composition go off the page. Lost and found edges, pushing color, color value swap outs, finding a likeness, brightness and dullness. All of it is considered here. So, uh, like I said, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.